Okay. So I know I'm a little early, but it'll give you guys time to get settled. It's gonna give me some time to get myself settled. So I'll be back. Also, if the music is very annoying, send me a message so I can either shut it off, change it, or whatever. I don't think we'll have copyright laws with this. <laughs> Anybody's wondering? I believe this was 2018 from Montreal Pride, so. Scratch that. 2018 New Year's Eve in Pride. Or in Montreal. I guess I can put earrings in. That'd be nice. So, we are here to watch me. Get into my gig. Getting into drag, honey. I don't even know where to start. Um, so thank you, Max, for giving me this opportunity to do our first ever drag makeup tutorial. So we're literally starting from scratch today, and it's so exciting. Um, after this whole pandemic craziness started, uh, I thought we all really needed a little boost on social media just to have some fun. And you guys can ask any questions you want, or we can, you know, spill the tea about Drag Race. Um, the look I'm doing is actually Nicki Minaj's look where when she was the judge on season 12. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, very simple makeup, it shouldn't take too long, but... I guess in no better time like the present, let's do this. So step number one is normally putting contact lenses. Uh, mostly because if your eyes start watering and stuff, you don't want to already have makeup on when you put them in and you start crying and stuff, it's not cute. So because I have no idea where I put my contact lenses uh, from the last show I did, uh, we'll be skipping that step and going straight into gluing down your eyebrows. So this is always a fun little step. I find using this glue to be the best. The purple one every other drag queen uses because it literally tells you um, when it's dry. It goes from purple to clear. Uh, so anybody wanting to try drag for the first time, that's a really good glue to use um, if you're unsure, if you're ready to start covering it with foundation and stuff. Um, so I like to use this one and I like the little ones too. I know when I started drag, I used the big hunky one and it's like this big and like huge. When you do that, you end up with glue that's like this much around your eyebrow and that is too much. You end up looking like you got oatmeal covering your eyebrows. So what I do is before I even put primer on because primer could relax the glue and then it just ruins everything. So oh, maybe this music is really annoying. Oh, it's from stereo, it work. So what I like to do is just do one, ooh, one easy little coat, and then I'll back it up and get the glue all underneath the hairs and on top, and then comb through it. 
and that just allows the glue to uh, some of it for it to be removed because you really don't need all of that glue and I definitely didn't need that chunk to come off but once you do the comb through and then go over it one more time it will flatten nicely and lay perfectly flat and I make sure that I get a good like three millimeters or yeah no not three yeah mil you know what I mean just a tiny little bit underneath the brow I don't know if the shine's gonna really work there but just a little bit underneath just so then that way the root of the hair is also flat and yes don't be afraid to lick your finger right now I wash my hands a lot and I just lick the edging you don't have to do that uh, but I do it because I like to know that once I put foundation over, it's going to be seamless. There's not going to be any dry chunk of glue on my forehead. Oh, and for all those paper towel and toilet paper users, you know what would have been a smarter idea instead of wasting your money on that? Old rags. And I'm not saying wipe your butt with old rags. I'm just saying, you know, there are other alternatives to cleaning up a mess than wasting paper towel. If anybody would like more details on how much it used, I'm just kidding. Um, so after that's that one brow is done, normally I'll just let it sit for a sec, just so the air can just kind of let it naturally dry before I start using a blow dryer and stuff. Um, because it just gets a little tackier that way. And gives it more time to set. And this is one of those things you want to take your time because if you don't let the glue dry, the foundation you end up putting on top of it is going to seep into the glue, it's going to wet the glue again, and then it will not work. You're gonna get to the club or to your gig or wherever you work in, you're gonna get hot after your show and then the second set's gonna come on your eyebrows are gonna be like lifted. Don't be afraid to touch them either, they're not gonna come up. And I like to just make sure they're flat, so. Wow, this one actually, it's like, Also, hygiene is key when you do drag, guys. I'm licking my finger knowing that I had washed my hands like three times before doing this video. Um, so, don't be sticking your fingers in your mouth unless you wash your hands. Okay. Once that is finished, this is kind of loud and annoying, but quick little blow dry and then we're gonna powder. Stay hydrated. Okay. I don't know if, I normally leave that blow dryer on a lot longer than that, but we're on a time frame, so. I don't want to waste that much time. Okay, powder puff. I'm not gonna show you the other side of this because it's real dirty. And I use CoverGirl because it does cover boys. Um, little CoverGirl powder. I use the whitest one that they have, but one with a little bit of a pinker tone to it, but the brightest one that they have because with this powder, it could oxidize your makeup, which just means that when you put a paint, like your foundation is wet, like paint, and then put a powder on top of it, what ends up happening is the powder turns the color dark. And we don't want that. Especially not if it's gonna be where our highlighter is. You don't want that to be as bright as possible. Or, well, as bright as you want it to be, I guess. This one still feels kind of wet underneath. You'll know when it's dry, like this one feels dry and I can see that the powder isn't even sticking most, like it's just sticking in the cracks. Which is where you want it, really. 
but this is just going to ensure that when you put your foundation, <laughs> it's going to dry on top of that powder and not, you know, seep through as much. All right, we'll go with it. This music's really bizarre, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if I start sniffling, it's just because this powder gets all in the air. And it likes to choke you out a little bit. Oh wow, this music's bad, hold on. Girl, I thought you were gonna be cute, but then you just weren't that cute. Mm, there was another one that was good, this one. She's quieter. You know, we're gonna forget about that. Okay, so, if you guys want it on, just say something. I also realize I can't see. There we go. All right, so once that's on, the glue is setting, it's got some powder on it, just to make sure that, you know, you got another added layer. You're gonna go in with foundation, so today, <laughs> I went to the drugstore because that's where I buy my makeup. Um, I am a MAC loyalist. I do have a lot of MAC products, but I don't work there anymore. So I experiment with new stuff and I like it because it's cheaper and I got more variety. So um, yeah, I went to the store and they didn't have any more of my color. So I get it's actually L'Oreal, really good. It's a giant cover stick. It comes out about this far and it's just a solid thing of like foundation. Because I ran out, I literally scooped out and a lot of people don't realize this, but when you get your makeup, there's a good chunk of makeup still inside the tube, even though you may have flattened it and you can't get any more on your face, empty the tube. Because there is a lot of foundation in there. So as much as I wanted to buy a new one today, it just didn't happen. So, we are gonna go in with my little dude, and we're gonna mix this up a bit. And then, loosening it will be easier to put it onto your face with a sponge or a brush. I think I'm gonna use a sponge today though. It could be a blender situation. Once you break it up a bit, becomes a lot more pliable. And we're gonna start, I start my makeup from the forehead down. Just so then that way I use a lot of colors and stuff so none of it's gonna get stuck to my foundation if I start here. It's not gonna fall down and get stuck. So with this, and yes, it does not look like my skin color but that's another thing we're gonna talk about today is skin tones. You really don't have to worry that much if you're gonna be doing drag on what your foundation color, actually it looks not that bad in the camera. <laughs> um, you, as long as you get something close, you can always play around with your skin color. Your face is never supposed to be one color anyway. Um, I mean, if you contour and stuff, it's not supposed to be. You can really play around with makeup and color and your face changes all year round. The sun will change your color. Uh, drinking changes the color of your skin. Um, not going into the sun changes the color of your skin. Like your face is constantly going through changes in color. So when it comes to foundation, obviously get something if you're gonna do, if you're wearing regular makeup every day, get something that's closer to your skin tone. Skin, skin tone, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. But if you're doing drag makeup, it could literally be a mix of anything because if you're someone like me that wears a breastplate, you can bring that right down into the same color as your breastplate. Um, you can literally put makeup on your breastplate. So you can really, um, really not have to stress too much 
Like they actually had nothing in stock at the store. So I would have picked up another one, if, if, like a similar one, but they didn't have any of them. So, c'est la vie. Okay, so now that I just did one whole brow in it, I'm gonna also bring it onto my eyelid because I want it all to match and blend nicely. I'm gonna go with my finger because I need way more coverage than that. Dabbing helps, smudging around doesn't necessarily all the time work because um, if you just dab, you're gonna have a little bit more product over the spot where your finger was. Okay. Actually, that's not bad. Um, so if you have dark eyebrows like I do, it's gonna show like a tinge of blue shining through. That tinge of blue is not is kind of what you wanna cover, but you don't have to stress too, too much because what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna be putting a bunch of colors on there anyway. And I do this to myself every time. There it is. Okay. Oh, Mike is watching. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Okay, so once you get that one layer on your eyebrow, your forehead's not that big of a deal when it comes to uh, putting powder on right away. That can wait, but your eyebrow can't. Um, once that makeup is on there, if there's an oil base in it or if it's a water-based makeup or whatever, um, it's still going to wet the powder that you just sat on top of the glue, and it's still going to wet the glue. So you wanna put a powder down right away because it's gonna slow down, or it's gonna quicken how dry your foundation dries. And it's gonna allow most of the moisture to go back into the powder you're applying on top versus continuously seeping in. <laughs> See, no eyebrow. Easy, it's time consuming. Okay, so second brow. It's had a little bit more time to dry. This feels weird looking at myself because I always have colored contacts in when I do my makeup and now I'm looking at this going like this. Feels weird. Okay. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll brush my finger going in the right in the same direction as the hair, just because there's those dark little looks like holes, and they are holes. It's gaps in the hair where foundation didn't seep in. Here comes the sniffles. I already can't breathe because of that powder. Okay, done. And then powder. Mike, it's too bad you're not here. I could really use a DJ right now. The Montreal house music was cute. It got boring. Okay. So once my forehead is done, and you look like you're missing all the hair on your face. I like to leave a little bit of powder on top, just, you know, to let it bake and look like you actually have talent in the kitchen in the baking department. Yeah, there, see? <laughs> Ends up on your tongue. Okay, so once that's done, I want to contour my forehead. Um, so, I use one shade of foundation, right? It's easy, it's cheaper, it's definitely drag on a dime. This is drag on a dime on a dime on a, a eighth of a dime. Um, it was going to be in the coverage. So um, what I like to do now is I will only use powders because I don't want to use something like this. That's, you know, this is another version of 
that big stick, but then they're more expensive. I'll use powders because that way it'll always look a little bit more airbrushed and I can really play with how I want my skin to look. Um, if I want it to look more matte or if I want it to look more shiny in certain areas, I can do that with powders on top of this super matte powder forehead that I have right now. So avoiding the brow area, I'm just going to take all that extra off my forehead because if there's any dampness to the forehead foundation right now, I kind of want that to pick up onto these colors or pick the colors up. So I have, this one's from MAC. Sun soaked strip. Super artistic name. Um, so this one's pretty dark. I normally don't use things this dark. I think this was from like last summer, but it's gonna look real dark real quick. I always go dark first just to build a base but you really got to watch out because going dark first means that you can't really lighten it afterwards so you really got to go easy into it and I bring that right up into my hair all the way down to this if you go from your eyebrow or your bottom of your eye to where you want your kind of drag eyebrow to go right up to that point right where your cheek has a gap so that way you can contour into there. Look on the other side. I really need to blow my nose. <laughs> I'll just bring it around my forehead. I kind of want my forehead to look as small as possible. And because of the hair I'm using, it doesn't have bangs, but it does have baby hairs. I want those baby hairs um, to really add on to where my contour is sitting so that my forehead really only looks like it's this big. Um, one second. Okay, so, that's that. I add a little bit more just to kind of Get that whole brown rainbow looking thing going. And I want this to be dark, like way too dark because, well, not way too dark, don't go crazy. But I want this to be a dark bronzer um, because bronzer will allow your skin color to kind of shine through it a bit and giving it just a darkening tone. It's not like you're putting a dark foundation on top of your whiter foundation because um, what that's going to do is put a legit pigmented color onto your face and it's not going to work right. It's not going to shine right. Like, even though that is a harsh color, it's going to blend out really, really well. So I'm going to go with a lighter bronzer and this really dirty bronzer brush. It's actually not for bronzer, but it works really, really well for blending. And I'm gonna go blend out the edge. And this bronzer is really shiny. So this one's really, really matte. It has no color to, or no uh, shine to it. I can open it. This one, however, has got little sparkly looking glitz and glam added to it. So when I put that on, what it's going to do is it's actually going to add a shine around my forehead. So even though the lighter part is still within there, it's still going to look like my forehead is a normal size and that I'm not trying to cut it in half. Um, but it's going to add that little bit of sheen that makes me look like I kind of went to the gym today, but I kind of didn't. And I meant to make it look like that. So just to, you know, put another bronzer on. I use this one. I don't know who, I can barely tell who it's made by. Uh, but it's really orangey looking. Right now, I know you can't see it in the camera, but right now my forehead is very uh, kind of mocha-y color. 
and I have this really creamy color thing going on and I just kind of want to make me look like I have real skin. So using something that's got a little bit of a redder tone, like the orangey tone that's in here is kind of a different base. What that's going to do is it's really going to just warm up my skin. I want it to look like I can blush a little bit better. My blush also will match that redder tone. So well, it's not going to match. It'll blend better. Okay, what's next? Fun eyebrows. Um, okay. Let's go in. And also, I don't prime my face. I was going to put primer on for you guys, but then I was like, mm, no one really uses primer. It's a lot of money, and it's a waste of time sometimes. When you're doing drag, a lot of the time you're in and out and drag within a couple hours, and you don't really care. So, with my eyebrows, I use a lip liner. A brown near tone. Sometimes I use one that looks kind of... Oh, my lip color. <laughs> um, but for this, I'll use a kind of a brown tone to it. So then that way it just goes on. I don't have to add more color to it. It's an easy draw them on. And I don't have any tricks to doing eyebrows. They're all complicated. But what I will say is if you can look here, my eyebrow starts here. So I have no other reason but to start right there. Now that's a perfect spot for me to now figure out, okay, if I want the brow to sit above where my arch actually is, I want to leave a little bit of space because once I start filling in eyeshadow, I want to blend that eyeshadow right up into this piece to darken that crease even more. But I don't want to have my eyebrow up here. I want to leave just a little bit of room so I can fill that in, but not give it all of this room to do it. So. Now, symmetry is tricky. I get that. I'm... I was going to say I'm not a pro at it, but I'm pretty good. Uh, and I start with like that Nike check. And what I'll do is I'll just start going up. And don't worry about the thickness or how pigmented it is right away. Cause you just want to etch. You just want to lightly etch it on. So what that's going to do is it's actually not going to mess around with the glue too much. You're not going to push around the foundation that's above it um, too much either. Because if you start messing around and then you, you know, try and get it as pigmented as you can from this point on, uh, what might end up happening is you end up taking off the foundation and then the glue comes off. And you just, it's just a mess. So... <laughs> Go light and take your time with your eyebrows. The same thing with your liner. When I do my eyeliner, I won't even be breathing. So you really want to make sure that you take your time to stop looking in the phone when you do this. Look in the mirror so you don't mess up your eyebrow like I just pretty much did. And I'll show you tricks on how to fix your brows too. When I do my eyebrows, I normally um, make a mess of the bottom. I try and keep the top as neat as I can because the bottom part, I'm putting foundation and more stuff on underneath. It's really easy to fix that. Yeah. I really need a new pencil though because this is getting real short. It's like... <laughs> I'll make them a little thicker because I'm not a woman, I'm a man I'm trying to be a woman in clown clothes. Yeah. 
Also, because I'm using a lip liner, it has a little drying period. So once you get that one layer on, you can go back in now and start filling it in a little bit more. What it's actually gonna look like because you're doing it over your actual eyebrow and then a little bit beyond, it's gonna look like this part's hair and then you got that nice sharp little wing on the end. Sorry, this is like the part where nothing gets very fun or entertaining because you can stop talking to concentrate. Oh, that was cute. I don't know what that was. Oh yeah, and anyone that's watching that has my phone number, don't text me right now. <laughs> Apparently airplane mode will not allow you to do this. There. Symmetrical-ish eyebrows. Also, symmetry is not key here. Unless you're like, you know, kimchi where you're super at your sketch, symmetrical, all that stuff. Yeah, okay. No one's face is that symmetrical. Her makeup is great though. I love it. But my face is not that symmetrical. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna leave those alone now because if I keep going, I might mess them up. Sometimes less is more. Um, so next, this is where drag does not become dimish anymore. 24 hour eye base from MAC is the only thing I like to promote. This stuff is heaven. This is the only primer I really use and it's because if you don't use primer with your eyeshadow, most of the time your eyeshadow is not gonna be very nice looking. It's gonna look real cloudy, not so blended. It's not gonna stick either. Um, unless you have like a wet foundation on and you manage not to put any powder on your eyelid before putting your eyeshadow on, it's really not gonna hold up. Okay. Use a clean brush. I don't have time. Well, actually, I have plenty of time now, but I don't have the patience to clean my brushes that often. No one else touches my brushes either, so don't share your makeup brushes, kids. This stuff is this creamy, I don't know, semi-invisible stuff. It disappears right into your makeup. And it also helps to be able to clean up. Once you make a mess on the underside of your brow like I did here, I'll be able to literally just clean that line just by using this because a little bit of the, make, the foundation will blend in with it. See? And it just gives you a cleaner line. show you on this brow because I did make a mistake. Now you're also going to see that my eyebrow hair is starting to peek through because I'm moving foundation around. Don't stress yourself about that because there's always ways that you can pass over it another time and then it's like, oh look, it's gone. <laughs> There's always times to fix your makeup. Don't put mascara all over your cheek though because that's hard to fix. Okay, so I do my entire eyelid all the way up into my temple because I want the eyeshadow to carry out. I don't wanna just cut it off to here because if I cut it off to there, what's gonna end up happening is it, it, will, it could give me a deadline in color that I don't want. So if I just do a straight line like this, put powder onto it and there's no um, primer over here, it's not gonna stick there. So I'm gonna have a line of foundation that's a dead line and then my wing liner may not match up with it. So I really wanna make sure I drag that out because, <laughs> pun intended, drag that out so then that way, once I put my eyeliner on here, my foundation line is, in, or my eyeshadow line is not gonna stop up here. Cause this stuff, literally pulls all of the pigment and it literally sticks it all to your eyelid.
not like using a foundation or something that's, you know, it may not be consistent. This, perfect. I was going to put a RuPaul's Drag Race playlist on, but then I knew we were going to have issues with copyright law, so gotta love that. It's funny, I can go to a nightclub, do a drag show, and post my video doing the song that I chose that night, which I don't own the rights to, and not get dinged for it, but do a Facebook Live. Oh my god, it's like they're hooked up with YouTube or something, and they're like, eh caught you you know like every song or something okay once that's done I could literally go on at any time and just start putting eyeshadow on but I'm gonna wear strawberry first so mm, those are good Live from Ontario. Um, so for my first eyeshadow, I like to go the opposite that I did with my contour. I like to go from light to dark. Um, just because I'm still starting from top down. I'm always working my way down my face so I don't have to worry about cleanup. I go with a little tiny brush like this. It's pretty firm, flat on one side, you know, fine. And I'll dip the end of it, tap the extra out. What I'm using is Vanilla Loose Pigment from MAC. This is the, well, okay, I know, I know I said that this would be the only thing I'm promoting, but this isn't even in this case, so I'm promoting it. Loose Pigment Vanilla. If you want a nice high shine white that has yellow and pink base to it, this what I'm saying by yellow and pink base, everyone is like within a spectrum of yellow and pink tones when it comes to foundation colors. Um, the pink tones carry out to darker tones, like redder tones and then purplier tones, but it stays in that warm spectrum. Yellow can go anywhere from eggshell white to basic yellow tones to more bronzier tones and more... Um, uh, like ashier colors um, because this is white but also has a yellow I don't know if the camera can really see it but in my eyes it looks holographic almost like it's got a yellow sheen and when I move I can see yellow I can see pink I can it, it works really really well and as a base to have you know just that one favorite color this works great because it'll match with every single color I put on my face because it's just a white base I can put anything on top of it I can mix it with anything um, so that's why it's like my number one my must-have if I'm not do if I'm doing drag this is in here hands down these two products they're in there I can f fake anything else and make I can make anything else look it's totally different but I need these two things. Anyways, enough about that. So I just do underneath the brow and keeping in track of where the dark shadowy parts are gonna be, like where you can see there's a, like a shadow here. I wanna fill all of that in with shadow. So I have no reason to carry this color into that area because I'm gonna be putting something dark and matte there anyway. So save your colors, don't do your whole eye in white I mean, go ahead if you want to, but I don't do it because I don't want to have um, all this extra waste. And I definitely don't want to have this shine carry out somewhere that's supposed to be somewhere with no shine. So what I am doing is I'm carrying it up right to that line. I'm not, see how I'm missing a gap here? That I want to keep up this stuff away from. But I'm just going to do my whole eyelid in it because the reason why I'm doing this, I want to keep the shinier parts to where my face has lift. So if I was to lie down, this is the highest part of my face and this is the highest part of my face. And here, but we're not going to talk about that. 
So I want those things to really protrude out when it comes to the definition or the uh, levels of my makeup. I want it to look like the things that are dark are deep and dark and the things that are bright really stand out. <clears throat> There's this like, I don't know if it's still a saying, it's an old saying where women have wider set eyes than guys. And when you look at any kind of um, old makeup book or anything like that, or even using, um, I forget what they're called, but it's like a clean face with just eyes, nose, and a mouth. And it's meant for makeup artists to be able to just, instead of always having a model, you can doodle on this thing using makeup. Well, the females one was always like their eyes were like over here. But by doing this, this is actually drawing out my eyes by putting it out here and increasing the size of my eye. It also gives it a little bit more of a cartoonier look, so it's a little bit easier to play around with and make it look as big as you want or as small as you want. Really, drag is subjective, just like every other art. You just do whatever makes you feel happy, girl. So once that's on, I'm leaving a little bit of kind of like a gap here. So I can add color into there and not have to worry about it picking up shine when I want it to be matte. Now, I am going to mess around a little bit and put something that does have a little bit of a shine. <sighs> Using my Pro palette. And it's called Expensive Pink. It's another one of my favorites, but that's all I'm going to say about it. It's pink, but it's got a gold tinge to it. So gold really looks good on my skin tone. I don't I find that silver does. So I want to kind of balance out how white and silvery this looks and put a little bit of a warm tone like a pink and more gold because I want my, my eyeshadow to really blend well with my foundation look. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry it right where that brow bone sits or right where that eye socket bone is. I'm going to bring it right up and then carry it right up into this gap. Because it's got a pinker tone, it's literally going to set my shadow. See how much darker that just got? I want that. I want to be able to darken the under part of my brow and then just drag that right out. Right up onto my temple. And then, you know what? I'm just going to put a little bit here too just to deepen that socket. So thirsty. That's what happens when you are under quarantine. Everyone gets so thirsty. Okay. Okay, and just get it all up under that eyebrow. And then drag it out. I want most of the pigment to be in this arch and then blend down just on the outer corner just to kind of this whole part here is going to be like sunken into my eye by the time I'm done because I want all of the darkness right up into this section and in here. See how a little bit, it's a little bit more gold, but I left that little bit of the, the white uh, color up here just to kind of blend up so it gets brighter as it, you know, it gets brighter. <laughs> okay, what's next? So because Nikki's look was kind of like a beige, I look like she kind of just brought her contour in her eye. I'm gonna play around a little bit more. Um, and you know what? We're gonna get away from Mac and we're gonna use e.l.f. This is a cute little one. Um, it's also not very expensive. It's got your beige rainbow right there, girl. Um, so if you just wanna get one of those palettes that's not that, all that expensive, I think you can buy this at Rexall. I think. I think that's where I got it. Um, colors are really, really great. There's a lot of warm and cool colors. So within almost every second one, it gets a little warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. So you can really play around with it. Um, but I'm going to go with 
I'm gonna go with this little middle one here with a nice little fluffy brush like that. Something nice and firm that blends well. And I'm gonna start in this crease again. And notice how my eye crease is this fold line here, okay? That's your crease. I'm bringing my crease up here because I really wanna exaggerate my eyes and bring them up. Now, by putting this color on, this is a matte color and it really shines or it really covers over the shine. It shines over the shine. Uh, if I just do that, notice how much deeper that crease is getting just by adding one light, one darker color that's got no shine. And it's just gonna carry on like that. I'm gonna get darker and darker and darker <laughs> until I'm almost at like a black, but I'll explain that. So keep blending and I do kind of bring it up a little bit but notice how I'm like, there's the white, there's the pink. This is where this color is going. I don't want to overlay the whole thing because then it just completely defeats the purpose as to why you're building a crease. Um, I do want to blend, so I you do take your time with it. Don't rush your makeup because then you just look rushed and it shows. <laughs> So this is a really upper headlight, but if I do this, you can see that I'm avoiding that white all up in here. I want that to stay as high as I can. <sighs> Maybe later I'll put glitter on, I'll show you how I do that, because it's real ghetto looking. But once it's on, it looks really good. <laughs> I actually use my glue stick for that. So next, um, I'm actually gonna go in with the same brush and I'm gonna add a little bit less. Yeah, I'll go with the same brush. And I think, let's go with this guy here. She looks real, real cute. And now we're gonna draw it back a little bit. We're not gonna go all the way up into the eyebrow. We wanna leave the eyebrow alone. We got a little bit of stuff in there and that's all it needs. Now we're just gonna keep it to here and we're gonna bring it down and we're gonna blend it into the lid just to deepen this little socket here. It's gonna blend up a little, but that's only to blend. We're not adding more pigment into the face. We're not, not going crazy with it. Now look, you see this? This is called fallout. Had I had already done my foundation and that landed on my face, I'd have to take off everything from here down. So that's why I say start from the bottom, work your way down. It's an easy trick to make sure that you don't mess up your makeup halfway through your makeup and then you gotta start all over again. Also that tap I keep doing is just to make sure I'm not over, over applying. I don't want all of that makeup because if I do, it's all gonna end up here anyway. And you could also have a black eye in like two seconds. So you want to avoid that. Working with powders means that you are literally working with minimal product. <laughs> okay. Just to show you, look, it's kind of messy, but I'm a man. So, <laughs> and I have eyebrows and I'm not shaving them off for anybody. So, um... I have a purple color that we're gonna blend into this. It's darker, um, but it's kind of that nice color I, get, I go into without having to dip into a black. I will use black later, but that's only when I put my liner on. And I don't remember what this is called, so I'm gonna go to right find out. Oh, Sketch. This is a really cute purple. Yes, it's from MAC. I'm gonna go in with this deep, deep, deep purple. It's one of my favorite colors there. And I'm, oh, smaller brush. Get into the little ones now. And I'm really just gonna darken the hell out of that socket. And using a purple like this with browns underneath it kind of gives it this charcoal-y color anyway. 
So you're still in the, you know, color wheel and I'm making black. Um, the reason why I'm kind of avoiding using so much black is because it could look really harsh, especially in club lighting. You can put black on your face, obviously. You can do a lot of really fun stuff with drag with the color um, or with the shade black. But if you use, look at this and how much more intense that would look. Like that's why we use it strictly for more liner and not so much an eyeshadow because if you just put that black eyeshadow on, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna look like you have a black eye. And it just doesn't look, it just kind of looks, actually to be honest with me, using black eyeshadow looks a little lazy. It's like you didn't want to put the four browns on <laughs> to really deepen that little crease and make it really drawn in. Instead you just put black, so it's like, poof, there you go, there's your crease. I know a lot of drag queens that just use like one color and that's good for them, good for do you. Um, but if we're going for depth and definition and color and drag and fun and shit, yeah. Sorry, I was supposed to watch my mouth, but it's kind of hard to do that when you're talking to yourself. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna dust off where the white is, so that way it just doesn't blend too much when I blink. All right. Eyeshadow's pretty much finished from the top. Um, what I do want to do, though, is put my liner on now because I want to move on to the rest of my face. Yes, this is normal. Make a mess. You're getting into makeup. It's fun. I'm going to keep eating these strawberries because they are so good. Thank you, Ontario Farm. We love you. Ooh, that's so sweet. Now, I use these little pen guys because they're really easy application. Wow, this one's so broken. It's literally like putting a stamp on your face. Actually, I'm going to start in my inner corner. The reason why I go so thin in the inner corner is I don't want bulky makeup. And yes, I don't breathe when I do this. Getting it as close to the lash as you possibly can. Okay. Come on, go on to my eyelid, please. This is also running out, so I might end up having to use another one. I knew this was gonna happen. So these ones went out of stock, or discontinued from MAC. MAC discontinued pretty much half my face. So that's why I've had to move on. Um, but... Oh god, I'm running out. I might have to do my wing with a different liner. Drag on a dime, Lonnie. You're running out of your face, you gotta use other stuff. Ugh, and I know I can't talk when I'm doing this. So what I like to do is go from the inner corner out along your lash line. And then once you start going in here, you can start stamping it onto your eye. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about the stroking it and messing it up and ending up building up your eyelid. And that, my dears, is how you make a wing. At least by my standards. Works, makes me look cute. 
there's like nothing left in this. Okay. So this is always the fun part is symmetry. Once you catch your eye though, it's where you're making your line, so. Never mess with the tip of your wing if the tip is perfect. Leave it alone and work around the other ones to make them match. You got two eyes. You can make one look real fierce and then one make look a little weird. And then you just pose on one side. <laughs> tip number one. <laughs> if you got a good side, just take pictures on that good side. Just do your makeup good on one side. You'll be good to go. I have makeup all over my face. I don't need. I don't know if you guys can see how shaky I'm being, but this is really hard to do. I like this one better. That's my good side. That's all that matters. Okay. Sorry, my nose is running, it's gross. Welcome to the channel. Reality at its finest. Okay. I'm just gonna take all of that excess off my face. Also, using a dry towel when you do this, like, as far as getting all the extra makeup off, the dry towel will actually pick up the makeup better than a wet one will. And a lot of the wet ones will leave product on your face. That's already dry. Wow, that was really running out. <laughs> um, yeah, if you use something wet, it'll leave residue on your face. And if it's a wet remover, well, you don't want that on your face because then once you start putting your foundation on, it's not gonna stick. Okay, I'm gonna try and speed it up here. Eyeliner, especially because I don't have contacts in. I don't want my eyes to look deep. And I've been putting eyeliner on my tear lines pretty much since I was 12, maybe even sooner. <laughs> um, it always just makes my eyes look more feminine to me. And even when I wasn't doing drag, when I was a little kid, I just liked having eyelashes that looked more full. So I would put eyeliner on, and then by the you know, a couple hours later, it was Avon, so it didn't stick where you put it. You have to reapply like three times a day. If you just wanted it to go to the edge of your lash, it would blend in. And it made me look like I had thick lashes. Even when I was 10. I'm sure you all know this step. I don't have to explain it. Get it to the root. I'm sure you don't have, you know, foundation in them anymore. I do this while I'm doing my makeup because I want to see the girl come through. I hate having that like ugly brown eyelash when you've already you've already made it down your face and then it's like, oh yeah, I still have to put lashes and mascara on. Well, I do it now, so that way when I work down my face, I don't have to come back to my eyes and do the whole lot. Be a great time for me to mess this up and like scrape it on my face. Okay. Ugh, don't get it on your eyeball. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Uh, I'll do the bottom ones later. I'll put foundation on first. Ew. Where did the Bingo. Got a little buggy napkin in your eye. Okay, I see it's just starting to come through now a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So. Good old foundation again. See how it just goes on and it's nice and clean and I don't have to worry about Anything after this, bring it right into the corner. Don't be afraid to get it 
all the way in there so you can you can always add more color and you can always blend out with your finger Okay. Now for the fun part. I gotta heavy load this all around my beard. <laughs> but first I'm gonna use a little concealer. It's nothing fancy, no color corrected, nothing. It's just a very pinkier tone concealer if it's gonna come out of this tube. <laughs> oh. yeah, this is when I break it. Okay. And I'm just going to go in with a little, whatever brush this is supposed to be. And just start painting. Cover the beard. Even though this does nothing as far as the rules of color correcting go, once this dries, it's going to set a nice barrier for when I put the foundation on with just a sponge. You're not going to see the blue shine through. I look like I'm going into the like Mufasa or the Lion King movie play, whatever, you know what I mean? Okay, na, 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 na. Get that in there. I won't worry too much about back here because no one's gonna see my jawline. I need the other side of this. Blender, blender, blender. All the way around. I'm starting to feel like Rafiki. <laughs> okay. All right, so give that a second to dry. I'm gonna take the foundation, did I do that wrong? No. Keep in mind, I only use one foundation, like I'm not mixing it up. My face is no special, like, mm -mm. drugstore brand, honey. Never would have said that a couple of years ago. But this year, hell yeah. See, no blue. Just shiny. <laughs> okay. A little bit more around that area. Excuse you. And then for the neck, heavy blend. Let's show. Okay, so once I get it all over my neck, I just want to cover everything because I don't shave up on my neck as I do like on my face. So it tends to show more little peek of your hairs than the rest of it. And then, hopefully, okay. Notice where I put the powder got darker? That's what I meant by oxidizing at the beginning of this video. Oxidizing can be a real pain in the butt. But, if you just focus it all here and then you have less on here and then you blend up in here, it's just going to give you that little bit just to set it without oxidizing it too much. And then... Typical drag queen. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
Now that that's finished, I'm gonna give my face a bright skin tone. Um, and by doing that, it's all playing with color. So I'm gonna go in with what's actually a foundation brush and this old Rexall whatever brand makeup palette from, actually I think this was from Sephora. I think Eva Darling gave me this when I first started doing drag. But I ran out of my colors, so this is the one I used to use. This is what I'm using now, because it's got more. Thanks, Eva. You a peach. So I'm actually mixing, you can see, this like orangier one and this super pink one. And what that's gonna do, is it's just gonna give me more to play with as far as color. It's gonna go on real pink, but then it's gonna get some like, you know, orangey or highlighty stuff to play with. So then it's just not like clown pink. It's gonna blend in with the bronze. And I'm sticking to the apples of my cheeks. I'm not going lower than this. So then I'm just gonna look overly blushed and it's gonna look like I've been drinking. There, yeah. right up there. My nose needs to stop running. Oh, it's makeup. That's, I guess, the only other downside. When you use makeup that's not on one brand, you might end up with, you know, not realizing like some of these brands make your nose run. Got some of them burn your eye. <laughs> okay. Um, next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in with a highlighter, but I'm gonna spray my face down. This was a MAC Mineralized whatever setting spray. Now it's water. Does the same stuff. What do you know? Normally when you have powder on your face and you wet it, it solidifies. So you don't necessarily need all that stuff. Honestly, makeup is subjective. Put whatever you want on your face. I like to use water instead of setting spray because sometimes setting spray feel like glue in my makeup and it makes me feel like I'm really wearing a mask. Using water doesn't really do much, it evaporates. Now where is my highlighter? There it is. This is another one from MAC, but it's like gold, girl. And I use a gold because I don't want a white. I don't want to look bluey silver. I want to look bronze, so. My cheekbone is this, not this, this, not here, up here. And I'm gonna bring that right up into where my makeup is. And then just blend it out. And because your face still has that moisture layer, it's really gonna hold on to the pigment and really make it so it's like high shine, high pigment, it's gonna last all night long, it's not gonna come off. Let's not that. Just wanna see this, a little bit of shine, nothing crazy. Next, what I'm gonna do is take a little bit more of that primer and that brush, and I'm gonna make kind of like a knife. Dipping it into the end and flattening it out a little. Just take whatever excess is off there. And I'm just gonna paint a line right down the middle here. Everyone that's watching this that does drag is like, that's not how you contour your nose, girl. I don't care. This is how I contour my nose because it's huge. Okay. Then I'm going to take whatever's left on that brush. And I'm just going to brush up and down. I'm not adding more, I'm not going crazy. I'm gonna do a little dab here, and right down the center of my nose, right where that product was. And then just clean it up a bit. Don't need all of that. See, I just want that line, that's it, nothing crazy. Whatever's left on this brush,
is what's gonna go there. I've contoured my nose. To me, that's contouring. Everyone else thinks I contour my nose like certain body parts on a male's body, but you know what? Your opinion is invalid. None wanted. Okay, so we're gonna go back to my eyes because I do need a little underneath here. Going back to this brush. I'm gonna use a little bit of that expensive pink again. Going right here, beginning of the liner. Not into the corner, beginning of the liner. Because I don't want darkness in that corner. I just want it on the outskirts. You know? <laughs> okay. Lining it up. And then we're gonna go in and take a little bit of a darker tone. Same, yeah, same brush. So we're gonna use something totally different. This one's really bronze, like really bronze, like the metal. But it's real dark, so it looks like a shadow. Just like that. Easy. Simple. Dusted. And I'm flicking out because I want the shadow to kind of go along with the liner. I don't want it just to be like underneath my eye because then it just looks like you're super tired. If you drag everything out, it's gonna make you look like you're awake. Hopefully. Back to mascara, and I'm just going to do a little bit under the bottom lash. This part is tricky for everyone. Nice thing is, is you're a drag queen, you can make a mess of this part. Oh, and I was just going to say, don't touch your nose. So this is gonna be a fun fixer upper. Actually, it's pretty easy. And roll up. And then back down. Bam! It's gone. And then that's it. Fixed, no makeup is gone, nothing lost. Another dry clean tip with spit. I actually always hit my nose doing that side. And I tend to stop breathing too. Okay. Simple as that. So now I want to contour my face. Now this part, I just go in taking the darkest color I got, which is this one again, just like my forehead. I'm gonna do like my skeleton bone feature, starting from my hairline right down. I don't want to go, I want my ball on my cheek to get bigger, right? So I want the shadow to come to about here. I don't want to bring it all the way down, but I do want it to go up and around. Just like that. What that's going to do is it's going to make this look way more dom like predominant and it's going to bring my jawline in so i don't look like so much of a man and then i'm going to separate it going over my jawline right over the bone and around the edge of my chin so what that does is it gives me kind of a chin strap look 
But once I blend that out, it's literally going to look like my jaw went... It's like a Instagram filter. Which is better because it sits on your face and doesn't float around it like Instagram filters. And that's that for that color. Then we're going to go back in with this lovely orange lady. We're going to add a little bit more color for the exact same spots. This time I'm going to blend up a little bit more into the pink because I want that orangier tone to come through, that bronzier look. But I'm not going down into here. I don't want that. Just getting the edge. Okay. There. Now remember that shiny one that I put, that third round one? This one? With the little glitzy goldy pieces in it. Go with that big puffy brush again. Blend in between. This you can take over your chin. It just makes the light foundation and the concealer that you had underneath blend a little bit better with these harsher colors that you have on top. Also, I don't touch this. Don't put color there. It's just going to get darker and darker and eventually you're going to end up with a mustache. So just don't do it. See how now it looks like I don't have those lines anymore? That's what I like. I like a blended girl. Blended queen. I put a little here just because I find it makes this look more pouty. You know, there's a darker shadow there. Once I put a mess lip liner on, it's really going to define that. Now, I lost my eyelashes as well. Actually, I didn't lose them, lose them. I put them in the wrong thing and they got squished. So I made these ones today. And I'll show you how I made them. I took a pair of these and I stuck them on top of the original ones that were on this sheet and they were just like an easy basic big shiny black fan. Like that's what they look like. Simple, simple. Stuck a pair of these on top of these ones and also I leave them on the plastic case because then that way what ends up happening is if you um, take them off and do it, you might make one look really flattering in the upward like wingy look and then the other one might just look like a round thing and then the eyelashes don't match so keeping it like this keeps them symmetrical and then one last pair they're really you know fluffy looking that pair on top so there's six eyelashes here three on each so what i'm gonna do now because i'm using drugstore eyelash glue and not no fancy uh um, magnetized eyelash glue or liner I'm literally gonna put a little bit just on the edge it's like I was gonna say something real rude uh, you just want it to drip just a little drip out the tip okay <laughs> and you just need to drag it along the edge you don't need to push it out of the product okay you should only have that Tiny, tiny, tiny. And then let it sit. You don't want to just put that on your eyelid. You're going to get glue everywhere, and then you're going to have one eyelid that's going to be stuck up like this for the rest of the night. So just allowing it to come out naturally, not squeezing the tube. I'm putting a little pressure, but nothing crazy. See? Little line. It actually looks a little thick, but it's not. Okay. I'm going to let that get tacky. It should turn blue um, and kind of translucent by that by the time it's ready. Now, what I'm going to do is my lips. I'm hoping this thing doesn't cut me off because I'm taking too long. If it does, I'll just do another one, put my wig on. Look at my pencil sharpener. Uh, this is the worst thing about drag makeup is you lose everything. Ugh, it's 
right in front of my face. Okay, so when putting on your lip liner, I like to start with my cupid's bow. Get the f like the hardest part out first. And I'm not overdrawn like crazy. I'm literally seeing the lift of my lip. I'm just backing it up a little bit further. See? And then to the corner. And I'm pulling down. I'm not drawing like this. I'm lining it flat, laying the pencil flat. And just dragging it along. Try to get your lips symmetrical, girls. It's one thing that really shows is when your lips don't look right, they don't look right. Unless you're like my sister, Isis Couture, in which case, pack it on. <laughs> Love you, girl. And I actually have old piercing holes. That's my guideline. I go to one hole and just jump on top of the other one. Not like everyone's got, you know, holes in their face to go by, but that's an idea. And then I just fill it in. Ooh, you know how dry that is? <laughs> and like that. Also, when you smile like that while you're doing it, it makes this go on a lot easier. Then your lips don't look like this. Too bad we weren't on lockdown right now. It'd be nice to use this makeup outside my apartment. Buzz eye. Okay. Lipstick. I use a liquid lipstick because I can get one that's a shine and it dries. I'm realizing how runny my nose is. Sorry. See, nice big lips. They don't have to be too overdrawn. They just need to outline your natural lip, unless you have no lip, in which case, draw them on. I may have had a little stuff, you know, pumping mine up a little bit back in the day, you know, not that long ago. <laughs> but my lips aren't that crazy big, so. See, easy stuff. Um, I do like a good lip gloss as well. I'm going to let that dry a little bit longer. Take a look at these lashes. See, notice how the glue is starting to turn blue? That's when you know it's kind of getting there. Once the edges go kind of black back, like clear, then uh, I would suggest that's when you put your lashes on. Otherwise, you don't want them to dry off the thing, and then when you put them on, they just don't stick. Not cute. A little lip gloss that's clear. Nothing better than a clear one because then you don't have to worry about having a hundred different colors like this one makes no sense for me. I just did that one day. Now my lips look humongous. Okay. Some water. Okay, it's getting hot up in here. I think that's my face. I think that's pretty much it. I just have to put my lashes on and then my wig. So, let's just do these lashes now. I'm with the... I line up in the inner corner and stick. 
Ooh, these are big. Bam, money, that's a lot. Holy crap. I knew. Wow, these are really good new ones. Okay. They're so heavy and shadowy that you almost can't see my eyes. Place and stick. Place and then stick. Don't meddle with it. Don't try and take them off, put them back on. It's just going to be a mess. Okay. So I'm going to change real quick. Take my boy shirt off. Put my breastplate on. Actually, I'll show you how to put these on. It's not underwear. So... Because I want my wig, because I took all that time to wash my wig and take all the makeup out of the lace, I really want this to be the color of the underside of the lace. Because the wig, I'll show you. This is the wig. She's looking cute and fair. She's super long and red. Because the lace is clear and the part in the middle of the lace is clear as well, I want that to shine through. I don't want my boy hair cutting it off and then I have a black inner part of my head, like middle of my head. I want this, Oops. see, because that would show through. There. Come forward, girl. There we go. One mine. Okay, um, two seconds. <laughs> This is when Josh gets his makeup all over his shirt. Okay. I was told to keep it semi-PG because this is my work. So I'm, you know, stepping off camera and being a good boy wearing boobs. Okay, Jesus. Ooh. Okay. okay. Somebody want to message me to make sure that I'm still alive. I haven't been talking to myself this entire time. Out of anybody that's watching, please tell me that I am live still, because it's going to be really embarrassing. Oh, I just like that descent. I did not dye my hair. I don't know why I couldn't see any of these comments earlier. What the? Hold up. Anyway, so uh, lay the wig down, hold it there. Ooh, okay, ooh, yes, queen. Look at she. Okay, so because I'm not gonna fuss too much with this. I'm just gonna lay it underneath the lace. Stick that girl underneath. Lay her flat. Oh. 
And same on this side. I like to tuck my ear inside my wig. I know that's weird, but sometimes the wig is just really big and I don't want to cut my wigs every time I put a new one on. So notice how the lace shows a nude tone in the middle. That's what I want. I never want my black hair to shine through that because that would just look stupid. Like there's no point in parting your hair if that's what's going to shine through. All right, and there she is. She's in her do. Okay. So this is my Nikki look. I know I don't look like her at all. I'm not trying to be Nikki, but my boobs are just as big as hers, and my wig is on fucking point. Pardon my language. But it looks good, right? Anywho, so I think... Oh my goodness, she's heavy. <clears throat> so big though. Just do a little part. And then I'm gonna take my camera off of my mirror because it's taped. <laughs> and I will show you what this looks like in better lighting. Ready for this? This is what it sounds like when you take your tuck out. When the whole thing comes crashing down now. Oh shit. Hold on, we got this. We got this. We don't got this. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Okay, got it. Yeah. She's laid. She's got her for face. And her mug is done. So this is how I get into my gig. Normally I have earrings on and all that other fun stuff, but like, you know, it's all coming off in five minutes anyway. Let me just... Also, I'd like to introduce you to my avocado tree. Yes, he's quite large. Just like Nikki, she's quite large. Her butt. So yeah, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Um, check out max.ca because we're bomb. And uh, yeah, come to one of my shows. I don't know when we're gonna have another one. Probably in like a month or whenever the hell coronavirus decides to stick it and peace out. Um, but thank you guys for watching and yeah, stay tuned. We might do another tutorial on like, let's say how to make a wig or something or how to style something, but we'll talk. Okay, bye.